All right, I do believe we are live once again here on uh, the Yankee Marshall's Lonely Yankers chat channel. But th this is going to be a special edition tonight. We're not going to be doing our regular just plain old chat. Uh, we're actually going to talk about a topic here, at least for a while in the, the first part of the chat here. We're going to talk about the, the role of militias in modern day society and what uh, most people's experience with militias has been, uh, what the role they think they should play in today's society, etc. Uh, I'm going to be joined hopefully by even more people here shortly because I sent out links to several people who asked to be here. Uh, but so far I am joined by two gentlemen here who I will let uh, introduce themselves. Let's let Mike go first here. Oh, me. Uh, let's see. I've been in the army for, out in, in the army for like 30, 40 years. So, and then I get out, you know, that, uh, that the uh, militia should be uh, augmented to the I think you're breaking army. up on us real bad here. I think you might be having some connectivity issues because your picture's real jerky and you're breaking up on us. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. Uh, let let's, me let's check go, my connections. Yeah, let's go ahead and go on over to Gonzo here. Let him introduce himself. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Gonzo. I'm with the Th Southeast Michigan Volunteer Militia. I've been a member for close to eight, getting on nine years now. Uh, we operate out of the Southeast Michigan area, as the name includes. Uh, so we're in the Detroit metro area. Uh, now, are you the one that said that the picture I used today was one of your militia pictures? One of the I militia, or didn't that... take a good look at that, but generally, whenever someone uses a militia photo, one of ours will pop up. It's like ever since uh, Vice came to interview us years ago, they like using us for all their photo ops and all this other stuff. Well, uh, uh, I, someone contacted me specifically today and asked to be in the chat because they said that the picture that I used was of them at uh, an event. Uh, or of, of the group that they belong to, maybe not them particularly, but the group they belong to. Uh, well, since uh, uh, Gonzo's ready to go here, uh, do you have any like statements you want to make right off the bat, like what what you know what your experiences with your militia are, uh, uh, what you think, what you see as the role of a militia in today's society? All right. So jumping off the bat, I'm going to have to go with uh, these thoughts are the thoughts of my own, not just the the group. As a whole, I don't represent anyone. I'm just a guy. Uh, if you do want more information, go ahead. Find us on Facebook, Southeast Michigan Volunteer Militia. Our website just got up and all this other stuff. But uh, our overall role for the militia group is to help get uh, crime, disaster, tyranny, uh, to help out in your community, to make sure that, you know, the power goes out, flooding. We just had dams break a while ago, so we have uh, – some other guys out further west that went and help out with all that other stuff. So, you know, that's kind of what we're here for. Okay. Uh, uh, what we've been seeing a lot of lately is we've been seeing a lot of militias show up almost as counter protesters. Uh, what's your particular opinion on that? Uh, it's everyone's first amendment right to protest and have their opinions heard in a peaceful manner. Um, I was at a couple of the Lansing protests, uh, my family actually saw me on MSNBC and, you know, I got a phone call after I got home. It was like, hey, were you, where were you today? And, you know, they pointed me right out of the crowd. But uh, I believe that everyone should be able to protest and have their opinions heard. You know, Governor Whitmer, uh, some of us believe that she's going way out of bounds. Other people believe that she's not doing enough. But, you know, it's everyone's opinion. Okay. That really doesn't answer the question I asked, <laughs> but I'll ask it a better in a better way here in a little bit. Uh, we got another someone else that has joined us here. Lockean liberal, I guess that's what the, I don't know how to pronounce that, but yeah, that's me, Lockean liberal. Does that mean sparse facial hair? What does that word mean? Lo oh, Lockean is in John Locke. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> you can just call me Bob if that's easier. Just call you what? Bob. My Bob. name. Oh. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, well, I guess Bob. That uh, sounded like a weird word for a second there before I put it together as a name. Uh, oh, we got someone else here. Let me let them introduce themselves. Looks like we have quite a few people talking today. Uh, Jay, hey, Yankee. Go ahead and state your uh, name and uh, why you're here today. 
Um, my name is James, and I'm here to talk about my stance on militias. Okay. Uh, are you okay. currently in a militia, or do you, is anyone in here who here in this group right now? Raise your hand if you're actually in a militia. <laughs> I wish. Maybe two, like one and a half. We'll count Bob as as a half. I mean, I, I, I'm in a militia it, to the extent that we are all part of the unorganized militia. And I, I and in that sense, I consider myself in one. I am not uh, as far as the legal sense of that, because I am outside the age to be considered part of the mandatory automatic militia because oh, I'm yeah. in my 50s. Uh, and in, our, in my state, I don't know about everybody else's state, but it's there's an age range. It's like between the ages of 18 and 45, I do believe, or something like that. And sometimes it's 47, but I'm outside those ranges. Uh, did you ever get your stuff fixed there, Mike? Can you hear us? Oh, me? I, I can hear you. I just had to switch to my cell phone. Oh, okay. As long as you're there. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> there's a couple of things I want to talk about today uh, uh, about the militias. I, I want to talk about, for one, diversity. Uh, Gazo, you're in a, a, a militia. Uh, have you all, do you have a very diverse militia or, or are you attempting to make it more diverse? Or let's just speak to us a moment about the makeup of your group. Uh, we are always trying to diversify our militia group. Uh, we got a large number of women, which is actually rather surprising as of late. Last couple of years, we've had more people come out, try to feel us out. Um, we have another militia group within the state called Michigan, Michigan Home Guard that has a um, few more members than us. But generally, it's just a bunch of, you know, Americans as far as I'm concerned. You know, it doesn't necessarily matter your race, color, creed, you know, religion. We invite everyone. So Yeah, it doesn't matter what color someone is unless there's – Unless they're all the same color. Uh, so that's basically kind of what I'm getting at. Uh, I, don't, I don't see a lot of militias being very cross-inclusive lately. Uh, I mean, I've had personal... Uh, uh, I go back and forth on militias because I believe in a strong militia. I believe in the formation of militias. My personal experience with actual militias has not been positive. Uh but like I say, my experiences have been very limited also by basically being exposed to like three or four of them. And two of them were h horrible organizations that I would never go back to. One of which I left frightened, you know, like I better get out of here <laughs> because this is not a friendly environment. Uh, so I, I just, I, I, I fear for what militias are becoming instead of what they should be. You know, I, I have no problem with what militias should be, but what they are, I'm kind of trying to uh, decide what are they? Uh, because like I said uh, earlier, I mentioned that it seems like a lot of militias, mostly white militias are showing up not to protect protest or to uh, protect anyone's rights, but more to protect property from protesters or to show up as counter protesters. And I personally am not a big fan of that. I want to hear what the other people in the chat here, if y'all, who wants to go first here, if you've got anything to say about that. Anybody? I think I have something to say. Okay, go ahead. Um, I'm with your, uh, your stance on, I actually do fear what militias are becoming like the Southern Poverty Law Center labels most militias as extremist groups. And I really don't want that to be. I really want them to be like what I want them to be like neighborhood police. I want them to protect people, protect the people who basically they know who they're going to. They know what to expect instead of people that live outside of the town. They have no idea what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I don't know if I would want militias to be police. That's something I actually don't want militia to be. Uh, I want okay. militias to be maybe a, uh, a defensive force, not an offensive force ever. And I think a lot of people see police as too much as offensive nowadays, which sometimes policing requires offensive work, which I don't want militias involved in myself. Uh but I'm mainly getting to the whole the counter protest thing. I mean, where does everybody stand on? Does it does it appear to you that perhaps most militias are acting in the wrong way nowadays? Instead of I, I've come to an opinion of 
either be there to protect protest, not violence, but be there to protect protesters or don't be there if you're a militia. Uh, we're not there to guard private property. We're not there to make sure protests don't get out of hand. Uh, that's not the role of the militia. They're not there to police the crowd. They're not there to protect private or public property. That doesn't seem to be my, my opinion of what their role is. Uh, and the things they've been doing lately have only been serving to reinforce those negative stereotypes. Uh, and I could be totally wrong. And that's why I'd love to hear your all's opinion on that. Does anyone here got an opinion? I already went first, so I'll let someone else. Okay. Who else wants to go here? Uh, well, I, I suppose I can go here. Okay. Uh, yeah. It, as far as uh, what you're saying, uh, as far as showing up to protest and, and protecting property, or I mean, sometimes it seems like even uh, they're showing up just for outright intimidation uh, le recently. And so I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really. Uh, uncomfortable with people who show up and who do that kind of stuff. And it seems like that's happening a lot. And not only is it happening a lot, but um, traditionally, uh, you know, when they would show up, I, I think for a long time, it was mostly like far right groups who were showing up. But, and now we're also seeing uh, far left, you know, armed Antifa. Uh, we're seeing armed, uh, it was like the, uh, the black militia that was marching through that park recently. And we're seeing people from very different sets of beliefs now show up opposing each other, both kind of as a militia, uh, both sort of hating the other person intrinsically. And I think that is a very uh, dangerous trend. Anyone have anything to add to that? I would think I have a rebuttal. Okay, go ahead. Like you said, Yankee, in previous videos, we shouldn't be afraid of people who don't look like or think like us owning guns. The, the, the whole, the whole uh, purpose of the Second Amendment movement is to get more hands in the hands of civ get, get more guns in the hands of civilians as possible, no matter what they think. Like, I'm not afraid of the black militia. Like, they're not, they're not going to go out of their way to intimidate they the only intimidation that they did was walk down the street with guns that's all they did and i don't think we should be afraid of that i mean i don't think we should be afraid of that either but i mean i can recognize when someone is intentionally trying to intimidate someone uh, and uh, I will say, you know, some of the, the white militias that I've seen show up to protect statues, well, they were there to intimidate people. Uh, you don't show up with rifles at an unarmed or, uh, uh, rally with, without the desire, I think, to intimidate to an extent. And definitely the black militia walking through uh, that uh, uh, monument area and through the city, I don't see how you can look at that and not see that they were there to intimidate Uh intimidation seems to have been their main goal there, at least uh, to maybe put the fear of God into some people that, you know, they exist. Uh, I don't believe that they should be demonized like they have been, like people saying, oh, they've given them three weeks to to finish the, to do what they're going to do about Brian Taylor or they're burning the city down. And, and the only place I can find reference to that is from white supremacist websites. So the people who seem to be saying that seem to be getting their information from white supremacist websites, because when you go to the actual statements of the actual leader, like here, I'll read the statement that was listed on one of the white supremacist websites that they used to say that they were saying that they were going to burn the city down. Uh, and this is from the guy who's in charge of it, something Johnson. He's like a rap. He's known by a rapper name, but uh, his last name is Johnson. He says, I'm not going to beat these people down when all y'all want is some justice. And for all y'all that think we are going to go in there and burn the city down, like somebody told me, and go door to door and snatch people out and kill them, y'all don't know what you're on. We are a militia, not a mob. And I'm like, that statement doesn't justify your stance that you just took that they threatened to burn the city down when he said the exact opposite, which just goes to show you how some uh, white supremacist sites don't care, don't even bother to make their evidence fit their agenda. They just present something, hope people won't read it or they'll catch a buzzword and, and not pay attention. But I can still, without demonizing them, say intimidation was definitely a big part of their game that day. And uh, I, I don't like, and they're not, they weren't being used to, to, they weren't trying to intimidate the government. They were in trying to intimidate 
the people. And I don't You're think talking about the black militia, the black militia and, okay. and well, the white militia too, but mainly that one instance there that day of the black militia. And I don't, I find a hard time reconciling in my head whenever a militia is used to intimidate or frighten or even control citizens. I don't believe that's what the militia is for. It's okay. not for a wall against the citizens. It's for a wall against the government, and not a wall against the people by other people they don't dis they don't agree with. Like when they did the thing in, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> just choked on my lozenge. Uh, uh, like I've seen a couple times, like when we were having the protests at the Capitol building, and the militia showed up and faced the crowd. I'm like, to me, that's the antithesis of what the militia is supposed to be. They were there, you know, to control the crowd. If the crowd got rowdy, they were there to protect the Capitol building. And I'm like, dudes, you got backwards what a militia is supposed to be. You should have been facing the fucking Capitol building, not facing the crowd. Whether you agreed with the crowd or not, you should have been facing the Capitol in case the government tried to take action against the people, not the other way around. See, that, that's what really annoys me about what's happening with militias nowadays, because you got you got to face it, most militias are right-wing, and they, they've been touting for decades that we are going to protect the people against the government. Now that the people who are out in the streets protesting don't happen to agree with them, you're going to go against the people. Like that, this is pure hypocrisy. Uh, well, Gonzo, you're a member of a militia. Do you agree with that, or do you see that happening in some militias, or do you do you all actively try to stop that in in your case, or what? Uh, for our group, we're just trying to keep the peace. Uh, you got to remember that the militia isn't just a bunch of rednecks out in the woods. That's been what we've been labeled as for the last twenty something years. Our group has been around. Uh, even dating back to the days when Norm Olson was running the show uh, before everything broke up. Um, there's always been a stereotype of it's just a bunch of white dudes out in the woods. And it's really funny because they, uh, they always say, well, it's not a bunch of mixed people or they're out here defending the government or protesting government. It's like, we're just here to make sure that no one gets hurt. Well, that, that uh, brings me to the question, like what you just said. You said to keep the peace. Is that the role of a militia in today's society? Is is a role of the militia to keep the peace? Yeah, I, I believe so. It is uh, it's everyone's goal to keep the peace as long as you can. It's part of our First Amendment. You know, I well, can't speak for everyone in my group. I know we have a couple members would say that, you know, we're... Well, what would you say to some people who say, well, as an individual... We got a couple people, members that would say... Uh, are you you keep cutting out. out. Yeah. Uh, but as I'm saying, right what would you say, though, to people who say, as an individual, we all have lots of responsibilities, but as a collective, such as a militia, responsibilities have to be well-stated and we don't really step outside of them. Like, if you want to show up at a, at a, at a Black Lives Rally ma 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 march and be a counter-protester, that's fine. But if you show up as a militia, maybe then that's not as fine or definitely doesn't look as good. Uh, would you agree with that? Or would you say there's things you should do as an individual that you yeah. shouldn't do yeah. as a militia? Yeah, <laughs> we've always gone under the flag of if you're going to go and you're going to represent the group, be responsible, be respectful. If you're going to go and it's something that, you know, a good 89% of a group thinks is wrong, then, hey, you're just going to go as an individual. We kind of use that as a oh little God, backdoor Morgan. to make sure that no one uh, gets thrown under the bus. Right, we got a lot of people here now. I'm going to ask everybody, if you're not actually talking, please mute, mute your microphone. The background may start to cut in and cut people out. So when you're not speaking, uh, mute your microphone, then unmute yourself when you're ready to speak. Uh, but I want to talk right now. We got a couple other people coming in here, Guard Dog and Watchman. Uh, I want to give Watchman a chance first. He said he sent me a thing, wanted to come in and talk about his experiences. So I'd like to hear from him right now about what messages that he wanted to bring in and add to the conversation today. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, so basically, my personal experience is that uh, a group here in New England, we've been to multiple of these protests, um, specifically one in Manchester. It happened a couple months ago. And 
we went there specifically with the intentions of supporting peaceful protesters that the police don't trample their rights and also to enforce uh, protect businesses. Now, I would say that it is absolutely our job to do those things. The Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, uh, says it's very clearly it's the job of the militia to enforce the laws of the union, to suppress insurrection, and to repel invasion. Uh, we were definitely falling under at least those functions. Uh, what would you consider, what would be the regular uh, requirement for something to be considered an insurrection, though? I hear people use that word a lot lately, like how uh, Black Lives Matter is an insurrection movement. And I don't see anybody saying they want to secede from the, the uh, union. I don't see anybody saying they want to overturn the government. Uh, I see them more saying they want to change law enforcement. But uh, I don't really, I think that that's a term that's getting misused a lot lately, that whole uh, uh, insurrection. Does anyone here have any opinions about that? Should that actually be something the, the uh, uh, militia should be centering on these days? And who gets to decide when it's an insurrection? If they're not, if, if, you, if we just have militias running around that aren't even, you know, in any way connected, who gets to decide what's an, ins uh, an insurrection and what isn't? And how do we prevent just militias fighting militias all the time? And that's just a warlord society, which, believe me, I've been to countries that have warlord societies. We don't want to uh, uh, see that happen. See, I was with uh, the protests. I actually went to one last week. And... This is not an insurrection. This is this is a bunch of people who happen to be black, who happen to be left-leaning, who are trying to change how law enforcement is run. This is not an insurrection. And honestly, whoever gets to decide what an insurrection is, I would say that's up to the people in that movement. If they say it's, a, it's an insurrection, then it's an insurrection. The... Intent should be pretty clear there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I guess I want to. I guess I want to highlight on the fact of the uh, enforce the laws of the union part. Um, we're not claiming that these people are insurrectionists. Although I did, I have seen firsthand accounts of these protesters lobbying fireworks at police, for example. Um, so that is a kind of an, it was something an insurgent would do. But nonetheless, I'm not going to categorize the entire movement as insurrectionists. That would be wrong and just, you know, false, in my opinion. Um, but it, we were there nonetheless to enforce the laws of the union, um, you know, looting and rioting, destroying public property and private property is against the law. And we went there to enforce that law. We also went there to enforce the law of the right of the people to peacefully assemble. I mean, uh, in what ways did you protect the rights of the people? In what way uh, did you form a line between the people and the police or and, and or what did you do? Yes, sir. We did that exactly. We formed a line. Uh, we told police officers multiple times and, you know, these people are peacefully protesting uh, on your oath. Some of these police. So we were at, I was with one group and there was multiple groups on the ground. So I'll give you an example. One of the groups was totally just basically, I would say, be, being bootlickers. And the police were like, hey, go stand over there and guard our vehicles. And we were like, well, no, we're not going to go stand over there and guard your vehicles, buddy. What we're going to do is we're going to form a line in between you and the, the protesters. And that's exactly what we did. Which is the way I think they should be doing. Uh, uh, now, personal property, the defense of personal property here. Uh, I keep hearing people say, well, we're here to defend personal property. Uh I've never known at a time whenever in, in history that the U.S. government or the, the any type of military force, including a militia, is there to protect personal property rights. Uh, I have exception with that because I'm like, if I own something like a business or a home or anything else, uh, no one has a right to burn it down and I have every right to defend it. Uh, but I also have a personal responsibility to defend it or to ensure myself against loss. So uh, I, I don't know where how where y'all stand on that opinion. I mean, I, that's just my opinion. I want to hear your all's opinions. Um, to clarify, are you saying that it's not our job to protect somebody else's property and it's only their job to do it? Well, it's not the job of any military I've ever known of, or even the police. The police have no constitutional requirement to protect your property either. So I'm not sure where it comes into the purview of the, of a militia to protect personal and private property. Wouldn't that be more of a personal responsibility thing? 
we keep having people come in and out here. Uh, well, many of the business owners, um, many of the business owners along South Willow Street in Manchester for that riot, they did re specifically request uh, assistance. Well, I can request assistance all I want from the government, the, the army, but that doesn't mean I have a right to it or they would even be the right of the army to do it. It would be their should be actually be their obligation to tell me that's not our job. We can't come set up a perimeter around your house. That's your personal property. That's your responsibility. Uh, so, I mean, at what point do we worry about if, if these businesses start asking militias to come protect them? Uh, well, when are they no longer a militia and now they're just a private security force? And does anyone concern themselves with that perception? Uh, Gonzo, I know you in one, is, is that something you all talk about inside your uh, movement? Yeah, we do talk about that on a regular basis. Uh, we've been trying to, uh, with the recent protests, figure out what our role is. <clears throat> so it's, we have a group, uh, the Michigan Liberty Militia, MLM, that their main objective is to go out to these protests and counter protests, make sure no one gets hurt, nothing gets screwed up, uh, nothing is destroyed. They're the guys you see most of the time wearing all black with the uh, the red, pinkish looking uh, emblem on it with two rifles. And that's kind of their role. And how, how the Michigan militias are set up, because it's not just one militia, which a lot of people get all freaked out about. Um, each individual group has their own individual tasks or their own directives. Uh, we do see an issue with groups thinking that all that they're going to do is protest and counter protest and be security when it's like, no, you have to realize that it's about your community. It's about getting you squared away, getting your neighbor squared away, getting your family squared away. You know, it, it's really nice to go be an Instagram model and go to Lansing every weekend and go, you know, get your photo taken by MSNBC, CNN, you know, and all this other stuff, but if that's all you're doing and you're not showing your neighbor how to defend themselves or their property or even your own family in some cases, then you got to realize that you're doing something wrong. You know, we're not paid security. We're not here to do this for a paycheck. We're doing this of our own free time, our own free will. We're financing ourselves for all this. So you can't just go out willy nilly and, you know, act like you're the cops because that's going to get you in way more trouble. Uh, who was the, uh, there, wasn't there a guy that played airsoft or something like that out in California that dressed up like local SWAT and uh, got arrested because he just fell in with the troops or National Guard or something like that? Probably. <laughs> Probably. I, uh, I don't recall it enough to keep it as a vast memory, but it's it's a deal of if you're there, you're there to support your community. You know, it's one thing to help uh, uh, the barber out in uh, Owasso because he's worried that something's going to happen to his business because he defied the governor's orders for the haircuts and all this other stuff. So yeah, we're going to support the community and help make sure that his business isn't destroyed and all this other stuff. But know? are you supporting the community or are you protecting him in that circumstance? I'm not understanding the, how would yeah. that, how does that protect the community? It seems like to protect the community, he would stay closed if he thought people were getting infected in his business uh, or, or two, he'd face the, the, the liability that would come with infecting people in his business if he did and accept the responsibility of protecting his own business. Like I know if I owned a barber shop and there were riots going on, I'd be sitting in one of the chairs facing the glass with a shotgun in my lap. Uh, yeah. And I wouldn't be calling in a private security company unless I hired a private security company. And I would have no problem with a, a barber or any company, any business hiring private security to come to their, their front lobby and stand. Uh, but do you think the militia should be that private security? From time to time, I believe it's our role to step up and take the initiative. When you have people that are threatening the business owner saying that they're going to come down, burn down his business while he's at home asleep or something like that, then, hey, we got to help our local guys out there. Uh, we have members that live in the immediate community. So it's like, yes, they're helping their own community. They're making sure that that local business isn't burnt down or other local businesses aren't burnt down while they're out there. Okay, you know, well, it, you, you'll see with the protests is that when they go out 
they'll start with burning down the one building and then they'll move next door and then, you know, the whole street. First, I want to say protesters don't tend to burn down anything. Uh, Rioters and looters tend to burn things down. And when we've got millions of people protesting and we've had, you know, less fire damage this year than we would normally have at this state of this time during the year from an insurance perspective uh, and a firefighter perspective. I can't think we can say protesters are burning buildings down when there's millions of them out there right now. And we've got very few fires. So uh, uh, it's right. Yeah, you're, you're correct on that. That's that's the wrong verbiage on my end. So <clears throat> just we want to be PC here. We want to not have people come and tack us later for for things we say. Uh, oh, yeah. I've already we're seen the chat. Uh, 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 Watchman, what do you have to say? Same question to you. I posed to him about this whole, you know, private security versus militia. What do you feel about it? Yeah, I think it's dangerous when uh, militia groups do start to take money for these things. Uh, it is purely voluntary, and when we start to take money, that's uh, definitely getting us into legal red tape that we don't want to be in. Um, I don't think going there voluntarily without money is, it, I don't think that's equivalent to, um, you know, being a private security company doing it voluntarily. And I agree with what Gonzo said. I think it's, um, you know, part of defending our community. Uh, we like to do both, you know, teach people skills and if they need defending, defend them. Okay, I, but I mean, I understand. I agree with you one hundred percent that I would not mind tomorrow if you know every law-abiding gun owner in town rallied around a business who wanted to open in defiance of government orders and protect them from the government. I'm like, that's fine. I, I support every one of them. But I think when you get to where you're doing it as an organized militia, well, then you're kind of getting into gray area where I think militias might not want to be, uh, especially even just. Appearance wise, when if the people in the crowd are one color and the people that own the business are another, do we really want to be where we're waving our banner around as we're protecting private property? Like people always say to me, I wish someone would burn your house down or blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, you know, that's, a, that's I'm a very active person on the Internet who lets people know who I am and where I live. I don't hide behind the screen name and it ain't happened yet. And you know why it won't and why it hasn't happened yet? Because most people know if they come here, they're going to get seen on a security camera or a motion sensor before they get close enough to light anything on fire. And then they're going to get a bullet in the head. Uh, if my dogs don't eat them first. Uh, because I take personal responsibility to protect my property. Uh, and I think there's a lack of that now in society. There's too much. The government will protect me or the militias will protect me. And I don't think the militias should. I think the militias should be standing up every day say, listen, I'm not here to protect you or your property. I'm here to protect the Constitution and to protect the free state. I'm not here as your bodyguard just like the police aren't your bodyguard. Uh, uh, And I just don't see that happening a lot inside of the uh, uh, militia movement. And I'm not, I mean, I'm not anti-militia. I think every state should have a militia. I think they should have a strong militia. I think it should be diverse. I think we should be looking at ways to encourage more people to join the militia. I think there should be, uh, uh, like posted weekends where, Hey, come this weekend and check out your local militia. And if you want to join, you know, become an active member, come become, come become an active member instead of just being an inactive member, like everyone between the ages of 18 and 50 or whatever are, uh, most states base age requirements on the military service requirements. So our militia group, uh, does that. We, uh, we host public trainings. We have a public meeting first Wednesday every month and we invite everyone to come out. doesn't matter. Just come on out, come have a bite to eat with us, get to know us a little bit, come on out to a training, you know, you always get people that say that, you know, they'll talk smack about the militia, but then once you realize it's your neighbor's four houses down, it's like, oh, I know Bill. He's a pretty cool guy. He ain't going to do anything wrong. You know, he babysits my kids all the time. You know, his kids and my kids play together. And then, you know, you see on Facebook someone posting about uh, militia doing X, Y, Z, and you get this bad nomenclature with it. But it's like, no, just come out. Come meet us. You'd actually be surprised. Most of us like Star Trek and Star Wars and all the other stuff, too. So it's... You know, which is a, uh, brings up another uh, uh, a topic here that I am not liking, where people want to call the militia LARPers. 
And I'm like, well, every aspect of society, anything like this you get involved in, is going to have some degree of LARPing to it. I mean, how can you say, I don't like the, the militia because it's a bunch of LARPers, but then you support all these tactical fucking schools and tactical training and all these guys running around dressed as military during the weekends to pretend to shoot, to practice shooting metal plates or hostage takers. I mean, like that's all fucking LARPing. That's all that is. That's goddamn, that's fucking police drag. You know, like some people like to dress up as women for drag. Some people dress up in cop drag or cowboy drag or, you know, SWAT drag and go out and spend their weekends pretending they're something they're not. Uh, so I think a militia is farther away from LARPing than just these, because if they're actually walking the walk, if they're actually trying to be visible, if they're actually trying to do positive things, then I don't see that as just LARPing. LARPing, of course, plays a, 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 a role in it, but it plays a role in anything where you get to put on a uniform. So uh, I just don't like that argument. I think there are a lot of Star Trek fans and uh, 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 sci-fi fans and comic book fans and stuff in the militia movement. It's not all fucking rednecks. At least it doesn't. we don't want it to be all fucking rednecks who just like pick up trucks and Budweiser. You know, we want it to be a very diversified group. Uh, and that's why I think, uh, I, I, I almost wonder if we should be able to form little groups in states and then like demand some kind of aid for the, from the states as a special interest group or something. Uh, but, uh, whoops, lucky liberal. I, I just think the requesting aid from states is a little too far for some people. It, you know, you know, that just leads to more government spending, more taxes, but that, you know, well, money's going to get... so much waste as far as ammo and stuff is concerned right now that that could be going to a militia, not just being thrown on a burn pile. Uh, but, yeah, or just... Yeah, I like being, that idea. I do like that being, idea. We're being shot up just because, hey, the National Guard says, hey, we got 18 crates of ammo left, and if we don't shoot it, they're going to give us 18 less crates of ammo next time. Uh, that stuff should be going somewhere where it can be put to good use as far as I'm concerned. Or they uh, could yeah, give us all those uh, military surplus vehicles that they give the local PDs. Oh, if it's available to the local department, the police department, I think a equal grant should be granted to the militias as far as what the police departments get. If the police departments can apply for a grant to get an MRAP, well, then the militias should be able to apply for the same grant and get an MRAP. Uh, I have no problem with that whatsoever. Uh, but I'd forgotten what topic I was going to go because I went off on the whole nerd thing. Uh, but uh, uh, Gonzo and Watchmen, you two are actually in militias here. Uh, uh, do you do have either of you ever had any problems in your own militia groups uh, with racism or misogyny or anything? Because I can only speak to the ones I went to. Uh, and of the three or four that I've gone to, like I said, one of them was just outright dangerous, just a pure hate group. Uh, one of them was very racist and one of them was mildly racist. But the, the people were like, we're trying to weed out the racists and bring in new blood. Uh, so that's three out of like four that I saw that had a problem, at least with racism. Uh, so have you all dealt with any of that inside your own groups or not? We've dealt with it. We do our best to snuff it out as quickly as possible. Uh, you're always going to get the the wackos that want to come in. You know, we had McVeigh come in years ago, and that just stirred the pot for oh, everyone. Wow. So when we get people that come out with the far extremist views that, you know, just, you know, you can go down that rabbit hole of legal issues that can get us in trouble. It's like, nope, get rid of them, boot them out. We don't want them here. You know, we've had a couple of people that tried to be, you know, sexist when they're within the group, and then come to find out the female members that we have in our group outperform them 10 out of 10 times. And, you know, eventually they weighed themselves out. If not, we just boot them. What about you, Watchmen? Y'all had any issues with? I can't say that we really had any major issues. Um, I think from my perspective, most of the racism that's coming out nowadays is really from the alt-right. And these alt-right arguments are sometimes really hard to decipher. So, you know, something that might just sound like a normal conservative argument might actually lean into the alt-right arguments. Um, and I think that's most of the racists that you would actually find that exist nowadays. Um, I don't think groups that I've been a part of or am a part of right now really appeal to racists. Um, you know, we do have a couple colored members. So, you know, when they see that, obviously, that would turn them off if they're a true white supremacist. Probably, I would hope. <laughs> uh, 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 it, it's nice to hear, you know, everyone is going to have a little problem with that, but uh, it, the, that it doesn't have to be the primary voice. Uh, 
and, and dealing with it, like you said, snuffing it out as quickly as possible, I think always works. But it, sometimes it's hard to snuff it out quickly because I have been standing with people that I knew for, you know, casually knew for 10 years, uh, standing at a table at a gun show, you know, reminiscing, talking, blah, blah, blah. It's hey, seen you in a while, blah, blah, blah. And the conversation turned to politics. And then someone I had known casually for 10 years referred to Obama as that N word he didn't vote for like a half dozen times. Uh, and I'm like, well, I would have never expected this <laughs> and I'm leaving. Uh, so it is hard to catch it because it's most racists aren't blatant about it. I mean, this isn't the 1950s where they can go out and yell, get all the black people, get out of the fucking pool. Like, you know, you would get mobbed if you did that nowadays. So they're a little more discreet about the racism. Sometimes it's hard to catch them until it's, you know, a little later on in the game. <clears throat> so it is good to hear people trying to do active things against it. And, uh, Yes, I know. Someone said you said colored members, but uh, I think he means black. I don't think I can't hold it against people here if they don't know the exact correct term, because I don't know the exact correct, correct terms. Uh, it's like they said for a long time, you're supposed to call black people African-Americans. I did that. And my black friends in Alabama, which was a good 60 percent of my friends, were like, don't fucking ever call me that again. <laughs> so I never know exactly what the uh, perceived proper word is to say anymore. So I go more with intent than I do with the actual terminology. As long as someone doesn't mean something offensively, I will not take it offensively and hope no one else will either. Hopefully they'll be smart enough to uh, uh, separate intent from terminology. There's Patton Oswalt. Patton Oswalt does a very good uh, comedy routine on that. And if you've never seen it, you should watch it because it will tell you, show you how stupid uh, it is to become too PC when it comes to language. Yeah, I appreciate that, Yankee. Um, definitely didn't mean it in any racist way. I, I guess in my head I used the word color because we have like you know Hispanics as well as blacks. So I yeah. figured colored would make the most sense to use. Yeah, I, I can actually find it kind of weird that I think if I used the term people of color, nobody would have a problem with that. But I guess colored seems like it's a bad term. Someone else does a routine on that. Oh, it's Louis C.K. Louis C.K. That K does a, a a comedy routine on how something by switching the the uh, uh, the uh, or, uh, 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 how where the words come in the sentence can completely change the intent. Uh, so they, that's also another good comedy routine people could watch. Uh, but uh, uh, <clears throat> I never met a black person who was offended by being called black. No, neither have I. I have met them that been. Uh, I didn't like African-American because it almost applies that you're not a real American. You're an African-American. And I can understand their point. Uh, Bill Burr. Yeah, it was Bill Burr. that like you call it Americans. Americans. What was that? It's almost like we should just keep calling everyone Americans. You know, I think that's what it needs to break down to. I, I agree. You know, I, don't, I don't care. I agree. But I also don't want to get to the point where we can't say like, you know, if we're trying, like if there's, we got eight friends with us and one of them's black and his name's John. And you're trying to tell someone else, like, like a waitress said, which one of you ordered the white wine spritzer? And you're like, John, or like, which one's John? Oh, you know, he's wearing khakis and he's got on a blue belt. And <laughs> you know, instead of just saying, Oh, he's the black guy. <laughs> of course, that's descriptive. There's nothing hateful about it. I don't want to get to that kind of society. I mean, we can all be Americans, but some of us have black skin. Some of us have, pale peachy white skin uh you know we can all have different color skins and then there's gingers that are like pasty white uh so we can be all different kinds of colors and still be americans uh oh it, it's funny as hell because everyone gives me shit because i'm a pale ass mexican who is so it's like that gonzo yeah i'm i'm mexican and they always give me shit and you're like how are you you know how'd like, you get here I'm like, i just walked across the border shoulder on the underside of my arm they realized it was white so i walked you just look like yeah, a fat white guy. Laugh at just look like an ordinary fat white guy to me. I know. I know. Dad bod and tacos does that to you. So okay, and that's one thing I do want to ask people here that are actually in a militia. Uh, uh, why is it that all the militia people I see are either three hundred pounds or ninety eight pounds? <laughs> it seems to be a common thread that I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Do the uniforms only come in two sizes, and, and that's the problem? <laughs> Because uh, I, I've noticed that a lot locally. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I like I say, I, I don't want to at any time during the day uh, uh, appear like I'm anti-militia because I'm obviously not because I'm completely pro-Second Amendment, no compromise. Uh, 
so I'm definitely pro militia, but I'm also anti something so as important as militia being abused by some people to be a front uh, and to act and start acting in ways that are kind of hypothet hypo uh, 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 or I guess anathema to what they actually what militia should stand for and uh, are hypocritical to what a militia should be. And uh, I see that a lot. And I see it a lot because I think there's a lot of hypocrisy in the gun community right now where they're very much like the constitution, the constitution, the government's going to come and we're going to fight the government. And then as soon as another group of people who they may not like speak out against the government, they're like, we're going to be there and take them out. And I'm like, well, that's no, you you don't understand when you support the first amendment or the second amendment, you support every person being involved in it. You don't get to declare an insurrection. Only the insurrectionists can declare an insurrection. Uh, and you don't get to declare what is American values either. Like I've seen a lot of the militia guys saying, well, they're against our American values. I'm like, well, what are your fucking American values? Drinking PBR while watching NASCAR? Because if that's what they're against, fuck them. I'm on their side too. Uh, what, you, and, go ahead. Oh, I, I actually think uh, one of the best things that we saw uh, recently when they had those uh, the gun control protests in Virginia around January mm -hmm. uh, is at that uh, – at that rally, I, I mean, it was very easy to find large number of uh, not just kind of traditional sort of constitutional patriot types. There were also police officers there. There were also even uh, armed members of Antifa who were there. Uh, I, I mean, you just you had people from all across the spectrum coming together uh, and being armed and standing up for gun rights together. Uh, it, I thought that was really awesome to see. Yeah, I got someone who sent me a uh, uh, an email about the what is it? Is it the John Browning Gun Club? John Brown Gun Club. John Brown Gun Club. Uh, that we're being too hard on them, and that we should support a lot of things they believe in. So I think we're going to be doing a chat with him soon just to see what his opinion of. Because I know I know nothing about John Brown Gun Club. I'm not saying I'm being hard on them because I have absolutely no idea who they are, uh, other than what I've been told by some people when I say I don't know who they are. Uh, so yeah, I, 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 you know, I like seeing different groups come together and I don't care if it's like, I don't like, I don't look over and go, Ooh, those people look like they may not agree with me on a lot of political topics and they got guns. I don't go, well, I wish they didn't have guns <laughs> because I'm like, well, good. That might be risky to my political beliefs, but, uh, that's part of freedom being, uh, having a little risk, you know? Uh, freedom isn't free and freedom isn't safe is <laughs> the one thing. But uh, I will say that the freedom in this country is safer than most unfree people in other countries. It's definitely safer than being under communist rule or uh, authoritarian rule or anything like that. Because uh, I don't want to, you know, because people always say that, you know, freedom isn't free and it isn't safe. Well, it isn't completely safe. Let's just say that because we live in a very safe country. Uh, uh, Mike, we haven't heard a lot about you from you tonight. Uh, what do you think about militias as far as comparing them to a military? Uh, do you think they're totally separate? Do you think they're a version of what do you think about militias in general? I think they uh, should help the military if we're like, if we were invaded, oh. they should back us up. Oh, yeah, the, but, the gun um, behind every blade of grass. I think that. Of. What I've heard here is a pretty good idea of you can you hear me okay? Yeah, we hear you. Hello? You are cutting out a lot. Yeah, he's cutting out a little bit. I think if you turn your oh, camera okay. off, you might be better heard. Sometimes if you turn your camera off and just use your microphone, it, it works better. That was the problem I was having. Yeah. Yeah. I think okay. There he is. He he's got his mic on camera. Oh, camera. Yeah, like I was saying. Like in a case of emergency, say China invaded us, I would like to see you help the military out. That's a good yeah. thing to stay in practice for. Yeah. Um, I like what you guys are doing to help your communities. Um, it's kind of interesting. I'm not, I don't really know that much about militias, but I was thinking of them to augment military or be like an auxiliary crew, but you're completely different than that. I've been, I learned quite a bit just by listening to you guys. And I think it's a good idea that you help your communities and you're centralized. However, I think there's some way, if you can centralize your training between states and things like that, and you could weed out the, the bad eggs, I think you'd have a good thing going 
and you probably bring up uh, your uh, way society looks at you. you say they got a mixed bag of uh, opinions about you nowadays. I never had an opinion, but yeah. Uh, anybody want to elaborate on what I said? Um, I might have something to say on that. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, I uh, the reason uh, I kind of want to join this chat is something I recently had uh, been covering on my podcast with talking about uh, using uh, the Second Amendment and militias as uh, kind of a, a means of police reform, uh, which I, I think goes along with what Mike was just saying about using them in different ways. Uh, and so something that I've just kind of been uh, contemplating is how can we, you know, I, I don't want to turn militias into, you know, offensive forces patrolling the streets, but uh, to what degree can we uh, use the idea uh, of a militia kind of it's more like a, a neighborhood watch group and that uh, the more uh, we can come together and take responsibility for our own defense as a community, the less we're going to be looking to police to do that. Uh, and the less power police have, uh, the less chance that they are going to abuse that power. So, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think militia should be doing stuff for me. Like, I would love to see, like, say, during a snowstorm and people are stranded when their cars break down, etc. I would love to see mil militia guys and trucks going around jump starting people and, uh, you know, helping people out of the ditch and towing people home and stuff like that. I think that would be fucking awesome. We ain't seen a lot of it yet, but it's because I think the militias aren't really very big right now, actually. So when uh, when there is a snowstorm, probably the 12 guys in the militia are probably stuck in the same traffic that everybody else is stuck in. Uh, but I, I, one thing Mike said that I think is a big point that I think a lot of people miss is I think a lot of people go into the militia knowing that it's a defense against our government. Like it's there to, we're there to rebel and, you know, civil war to the boogaloo, you know, uh, that's what they're there for, but no, they're there to defend our, our nation against tyranny, both foreign and domestic. Uh, but foreign is one of the big words too. So they should be in some way, uh, I don't say not when I use the word conspiring with local governments and federal governments and state governments, but there should be a, a sense of cooperation. Like, like he said, if something like China invaded, you know, uh, and we actually had warfare on our lands for the first time since the civil war, uh, the militia would be there as a backup for the standing army. They wouldn't be opposed to the standing army. They're not just going to stand down and go, this isn't our role. That would be definitely one of their roles. Uh, do either of you guys that are in the militia, do you all actually ever talk about the pro government side of being a militia? Hello. If there's Sorry, some time, I would like to make a statement. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I honestly think when it comes to militias in general, I think it comes down to also guns in general. I believe if we want to get militias to a point of prominence and a point of popularity, I could say, I believe what we need to do is depoliticize guns because most people who are on the side of gun rights they're on the right. They're Republicans. I'm, I'm left leaning, and I support gun rights. I think we should see. We should start telling people, "Hey, this isn't a matter of political party. This is a matter of your rights as a citizen, no matter what your political opinion." Someone just put in. Someone just put in the statement about Cornwallis knew that uh, militia lines always break. Yeah, I thought we. I think we saw an example of that. I don't know how many people have seen some of the imagery from uh, the event. I think it was today or yesterday. I think it was today uh, where someone had a ND at one of the events where the black militia and a white militia are both there. Someone had a, a an ND with their shotgun and injured two of their own guy or three of their own people. But they didn't like shoot the other group or anything. And the video of the area the watching the militia guys scramble and hide <laughs> was kind of funny because it was about half of them kind of like stood their ground and they got told to take a knee, you know, because they knew something was going on. Uh, but so many of them just scramble, scrambled away, <laughs> like falling down and crawling away. It was just, uh, it was kind of funny. And it goes to show you that, you know, a lot of people in militias have no training. They're not real sure of how to act in, uh, situation. So that makes me even more like we should at least have a little bit of training in the militia. We should, we should, 
get people ready for a gunshot because most people, you know, a gunshot in a public place is not something they're used to hearing and fight, flight or freeze takes over. So, uh, uh, and, and we're just people. So we got to have a little bit of training there, I think. And I think that's something uh, when you particularly we talk about uh, groups like uh, Oath Keepers, I, I, I think it kind of touches on two things that you were just saying. First about uh, being there not only against the government before the government, uh, but then also uh, as far as having that discipline is uh, I, I think they might be a great model because these are people who have some past experience in uh, military or in the police and who uh, the whole point is that they want to continue to uh, uphold their oath to protect the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. I, and I think something like that provides a, a good model for both uh, uh, disciplining and for seeing a role of the militia, both, you know, for or against the government as the need may arise. Uh uh, what was I going to say here? Who was it? Just said something. Uh, Wesley Bradshaw said, "Do militias do a pedophilia background check?" Uh, I don't believe they do. They Wesley, so you, uh, you should be able to join with no problem whatsoever, because I don't think they do. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, I, and I don't even know about that because I, you know, I, I hate when people. I, I don't like the whole. As soon as someone does something we don't agree with, let's look at every little thing bad about them. Now, I agree pedophilia is a horrible thing, uh, but I would like to think most pedophiles are in prison if they've ever been caught. If we would ever know to, to know they were a pedophile, they'd, they'd have had been caught and we hopefully they'd be in prison still. I don't like the idea of any prison system that lets pedophiles out after a year, whereas people who just got caught smoking a joint are still in jail after 10 years. Uh, so uh, that but that's another policy issue. That's a fixing our justice system, not uh, uh, militia systems. It's kind of like with, with gun laws and background checks, how I don't agree with background checks. And people say, well, what about all these people get out of jail? They're still criminals. I'm like, well, that's an argument to change the, the, the political, the uh, jail system, not an argument to, to infringe the second amendment. So I kind of agree thing there. Militias shouldn't have any responsibility to know what the backgrounds of their members are. Uh, if they're really bad people, they shouldn't be on the streets. And, and also, you know, once you get into a group with people, it, it soon becomes a you come you start to realize who has problems and who doesn't. Uh, I mean, if you really interact with your other militia members, you're going to realize people are going to start saying, hey, I think John might be a couple cards short of a deck. So maybe when we go out next time, people keep an eye on John. Uh, I hope none of you are actually named John so that you think I'm talking about you. But uh, uh uh, we're getting to the end of the chat here. We're about out of time. I only wanted to do this for an hour. Uh, does anybody got any like closing statements or points they feel like they want to make that we didn't cover today or uh, anything? Because it almost feels like this came off a kind of a little bit anti uh, militia, but that's not what we're uh, any of us here mean, especially me. I'm anti people who do things that make the militia system look bad, but people who actively engage in a, uh, a fair and open and uh, 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 constitutionally uh, uh, oriented militia. I'm 100% for, I want to make that clear. But has anybody here got anything they want to say like in closing or touch on something we haven't spoken about yet? Uh, I may start. The best thing I can recommend is find your local militia, go to a meeting, go to some training. You really won't know who these people are until you go out and you actually meet them. You know, it's one thing to follow a Facebook group and do this other stuff. But when you're actually out there and you go do stuff, with the guys and you kind of figure out who they are, what type of people they are, you get along with them pretty well. You know, I got, you know, militia members for me that are closer to me than family. So, you know, the only thing I can recommend, just find your local group, get in contact with them. If you don't like what group A has to offer, go check out group B, go check out group C. So you find something that fits your, uh, your narrative, you know, and that's about it. And another you know, thing like you said here too about, showing up and getting to know people. Uh, you don't have to be someone who actually wants to go out and then roll around in the mud and play soldier with, to, to show up at uh, 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 militia meetings. You can be a person who's like, like me, I do not like shooting with people I don't know really, really well. I just, I don't like public ranges. I don't like even like groups of people who go shoot at SHOT Show. I don't want to be in a bay with a bunch of people shooting. You know, I just don't like it. Uh, and and all the horror stories from SHOT Show of all the people that are like, ah, get the gun away from, a, you know, uh, I just don't like it. So you can show up at a, 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 a militia meeting and be want to be an active member of the militia, but not want to really like I'll pr practice privately. I don't want to be engaged in any uh, 
war games or anything because I'm not into that public type of camaraderie. So you all wouldn't have a problem with that, would you? With our group in particular, to become an active voting member, you do have to have a qualification, which isn't too much. Uh, you know, it's a walk, shoot, gear check. Um, it, it's designed so that the basic man can do it. You know, it doesn't cost a fortune to get squared away. Mm -hmm. I today had a training class that, you know, I shot 500 rounds of pistol ammo. I got another training class tomorrow that I got to drive halfway across the state to go do. So it all depends on you as a person. You know, when push comes to, push comes to shove, it's all on you. If you want to go get training, go get training. You want to get training with a group, get training with a group. But at the end of the day, you're the only guy there that can save your own life. All right. Anybody else got anything they want to add to the conversation before we wrap it up here today? I got one. Okay. Depoliticize guns, depoliticize the militia, the militia, and be open to left-leaning people. That's it. I think that is a message we've been trying to portray. I've been putting forth on my channel for a long time. Anybody else? Watchmen, anybody got anything they want to add today before we get out of here? Yeah, I got something just to close real quick and go back to an earlier point. Um, You mentioned the fact of, you know, militias there to protect a free society. And it was in the context of our discussion about the, uh, you know, defending businesses and whatnot. Um, I do think that when militias show up, we are out there to, you know, uh, it, defend a free society. And when we have anarchy and the rule of mob, um in that kind of, so uh militias like us we try to make the best decisions possible uh maybe we don't always make the right decision but uh you know we're just trying to do our best to preserve the rule of law preserve the constitution stand with our neighbors if you have questions for us um you know like uh gonzo said um you know don't be afraid to you know message us or don't be afraid to ask us questions even if we're sitting there all tacked out and we look scary i guarantee you we're probably not scary uh don't be afraid to just you know ha have a conversation um well, you know one last little point is that when we were in manchester new hampshire for the blm uh protest you know there were some blm protesters who sat there and they'd be like hey who are you you know who are you with are you law enforcement you know blah 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 and they actually seemed to genuinely want to you know see who we were they would be like oh do black lives matter and be like yeah of course black lives matter you know we would respond to them like that we would try to engage in dialogue but there were other people there who just wanted to yell at us who just wanted to say why do you have guns here blah 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 you know and instigate us um so i think the only way to avoid this upcoming civil war which is coming in this country is just for all of us to demand peace, you know, try to talk to your neighbor, even if he disagrees with us, you know, don't remove that friend on Facebook. who made a post that you don't like, you know, that's, that's exactly how we're going to end up in a very bad situation in this country. And I do agree with part of Yankees point of militias in the right wing. They're not making it any better. You know, you can blame a lot of the white right wing pundits for escalating everything that's going on just as much as you can blame the left wing side uh you know we really need dialogue um so don't be afraid to do that yeah you mentioned earlier something about a lot of the bad stuff coming from the alt-right it's amazing how many people in in the gun community right now if you said alt-right is racist they would throw a fit and say the alt-right is not racist and not even be aware that the alt-right is just a bunch of racist organizations that came together and changed their name so that people wouldn't call them the clan anymore uh and they're just unaware of easy to find reality of like when Richard Spencer and all the other white hate groups came together in uh, that one big conference room and said, here's our new alt-right logo. And this is our new name because, you know, all of our groups that had the name nationalists and had the uh, Nazi in it, we decided it doesn't trend well with people today. So we're going to call ourselves alt-right. Um, and I believe we've even done uh, uh, never enough ammo held an alt-right chat to bring people in that are, propose you know uh, uh, self uh, appointed uh, alt right people to show that they're not racist and they started off the chats by said basically every single one of them said uh, I'm alt right I'm not racist but here's why black people are inferior to white people 
And I'm just like, well, this is going to be an interesting chat. Uh, so, yeah, you'd be surprised how many people don't even know alt-right is racist. Uh, we had one person, Justin, kept trying to join us, but it looks like he's clicking no when it asks for access to his microphone and his camera. So it's saying I can't add him because he's not allowing access to his camera and his microphone. I thought we were going to have one last word here. But uh, unless anyone else has got anything to say, anybody else got anything? I, I guess I would just have one thing to throw in real quick if I can. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I got the main point that I kind of wanted to cover and uh, talk about here today. Uh, uh, and th we didn't really get around to it, which is all right. It was a great conversation, but uh, I, I really kind of uh, want to encourage people uh, as far as getting uh, educated uh, in the history and, uh, and the law uh, of these things. And so I, I always try and talk to people and, and uh, tell them to learn about uh, the Militia Acts and the 1903 Dick Act uh, and, and learn about the common law uh, right of self-defense. And I, I, I encourage people to take time and uh, to get to know uh, the history, both uh, sort of of our of people uh, and of the laws uh, together. And that I, I think that is something not enough people really look into. Uh, when it comes to militias and the Second Amendment. I, and I think that's a really crucial thing that uh, we should be promoting as much as possible. All right. Great message. All right. I want to thank everyone for coming today. I mean, we can't cover everything about militias today. We might have to do this other a chat again. Uh, but I just want to thank everyone for coming in today and saying their piece and uh, just being a part of the little panel here. I think it's nice when you see people actually have a reasonable conversation and not see them out in their camo with their guns because it does make that does put a little bit of a barrier between conversations sometimes. Although I don't know about anybody else in here, but when I see guys show up in their camo and their guns at rallies or, or protests or anything, I don't find them scary. I just kind of like almost giggle sometimes. Uh, but uh, 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 it depends on what they're they're doing. You know, some of the guys that show up are clearly not part of anything organized. They're just, I don't know, want to feel like they belong to something. And that's something we should have covered about militias too. There is a lot of people who are drawn to militias just to feel like they belong, just like college fraternities kind of. Uh, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just a thing. Uh, but I want to thank all of you for coming in here and adding your perspective. We really do appreciate it. Uh, we've gone a little over. For everyone who did a super chat or something in here, I'm going to try to answer it in the next chat because I've already started another chat you can go to. Uh, let me see if I can actually get it pulled up. Uh, I don't know if I can. It'll be coming up on YouTube here in a minute. <laughs> so if anyone wants to go over to it, go on over to that one. Uh, I'll be starting in a few minutes. Uh, but thank you guys for coming in, like I said, and lending your perspective on everything. So uh, just wave bye to the camera and say, see everybody later. Thanks for having us. No problem.